Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. That's right. Welcome fucking back to another edition. And I know you're used to it, but I got something new as well. (laughs) Welcome back to the 111th edition of Suck My balls and you're watching this on the video what's up as we look up to the camera what's going down as you can see our boy dirty j we're back here for another edition of check my balls of course i'm your host in the heat and i can't be beat i'm your guy who's high but the air is dry your boy msg you can follow me on twitter and on instagram and badly nurse car chat each and every week i'm joined by these two guys who have been with me along this whole journey as we have serenaded oh, your ears with South Park reviews, we have given you over 110 reviews, and now we're gonna celebrate. Yes, the cliche thing was to celebrate on 100. No, we're doing it on one, one, one. And I am not alone. Ladies and gentlemen, make his way back to the podcast, of course. The man who's been with me since the beginning, the OG, the C- S to the C to the double O B. Time out, the time, time out, the time, time out. out. Scoop of mother freaking uh, Jackson. Scoop Jackson's here. Time out, time out. Skip. Time out. Scoop doesn't. It's been a while since Scoop's been on camera because he's not looking up. He's looking up. <laughs> look up with the audience. What's up, Scoop? <laughs> hey, guys. Yeah. And of yeah, course, it's been a little while. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, making his way back to the podcast is my boy, Dirty, Dirty JV. He's been with us too for like 80, 90 episodes, most of the episodes as well. He's here. <laughs> but he's uh he's- I, I, I try to be here <laughs> how you doing joe I, i'm doing okay i'm recording in vegas at my mother's my mother who won't say the name of the podcast but is fully aware of it that's well, awesome that is awesome that your dude mom- you're only five uh, yeah from us right now yeah he's only five hours away you should pass through on your way home. I'm so mad that Joe didn't book a show out here. He could have just booked a show in Arizona this weekend, but you couldn't do that. Now, could you, Joe? No, because I got booked in Vegas like four months ago. Yeah, and if my days off had changed from Tuesday to Wednesday, honestly, Scoop, I was going to say, fuck it, let's go to Vegas. Like, I would have said, let's go to Vegas and we'll record in person, but I... I have to work today. But you're not here to hear about our personal lives. You're here to hear about Suck My Balls, which is a South Park review where we bring South Park reviews to you. And this is our 111th episode. So you're probably asking yourself, what are we have? What do we have planned for our, our celebration style, Scoop? What, what do you what, what do we have planned? Well, here's what we have planned, guys. Throughout this episode, we're going to you know review the episode. And then we're going to also drop in some different comments from different fans and content creators who have sent us some information in or send us some feedback. Um, so first off, um, we're going to start off with uh, our boy here, Athers from the United Kingdom. Let's do it. Who was uh, on our PIP episode uh, where we reviewed PIP. So uh, what's Love up, you, What's up, Athers? What do you got to say? Hello, I'm Athers, and I'm a British person. Congratulations on reaching 111 episodes. Suck my balls. What a legacy. Yes. <laughs> he makes us sound so legacy. he makes us sound so cool. It sounds so classy. What a legacy. So, so cool. Sounded just like Malcolm McDowell. It was great. It was great. It's amazing. I'm a British person. <laughs> All right. And of course, we, 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 we want to start off with one of our big fans who's always sending us feedback uh, via our Facebook groups, and that is Jim Slay. And Jim has sent in something as well. Well, if it's a pussy discharge, you should probably get it checked out. Oh, hey, guys. Um, so I'm Jim Slay. I'm on the scene where the air is probably not so clean, but I'm raking in that other kind of green. And I uh, just wanted to show my appreciation, my love for you guys. I'm not a podcast guy, but I listen on a weekly basis. You guys make my week just a little less sucky. I don't have a lot of friends that eat, breathe, and speak South Park the way that I do. So it's good to have that that camaraderie to, to go through and do the quotes and, and pick up on the catchy little lines. 
So uh, anytime you guys are ever in OKC or if I'm out where you guys are, just know there's an open tab with my name on it. Uh, you're getting into the episodes, the seasons where they hold a special place in my heart. So I'll be doing a lot of more uh, commenting and hopefully uh, ripping right along with you guys. So once again, thanks. Keep up the good work. We'll talk to you soon. I wish he had said suck my balls there, but that's fine, Jim. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jim. Mm-hmm. Love you, dude. I'm I'm licensed in Oklahoma, so I'm gonna take you up on that offer, Jim. Ooh, Joe wants to get drunk with you, Jim. Kind of right. always wanted to go to OKC too. Oh, in the OKC, and you can watch some. Right, you can watch the non-existent Thunder that are good now. Anyway, uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, this is all about the Mormons, of course, and it is the twelfth episode of season seven and the one hundred eighth overall episode of South Park. That's right. We're gonna jump right into it because we would all we know this Let's is gonna go. be an action-packed, totally jacked. Maybe you're going to like change your nutsack Take my bath. as we review all about the Mormons. And this first aired on November the 19th, 2003. Now, here's how this episode starts off. A Mormon kid, a brand new kid moves to South Park, Colorado, and it's up to Stan. And, you know, uh, you know, I guess it's up to Stan himself to, you know, kick his ass. But unfortunately for the rest of the group... <laughs> I guess Stan has become friends with this kid and we're going to find out what the Mormon religion is all about. So before we get started here, I think we'd be remiss if we didn't recognize the fact that we have a former, I guess you'd say active Mormon. I mean, you'll always, your family's still part of it. I assume members and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. So you'll always still be linked in that. You're not, Mm -hmm. I think it would be fair to say you're not here to bash them, but you are going to, you are going to point out some, maybe some of the things that seem idiotic. A couple of flaws (laughs) and, some things that, you know, a little stupid. Stupid. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I guess I can't say that right. Uh, I can't say that anymore, can I? I don't know. Can you say that? Um, I don't want to get us canceled. Some someone comes up. Oh. oh. All right. Well, anyway, let me go ahead. And Just like the contradictions, you know, some of those sillies. Some of those sillies. Yeah, no, I agree. There's some, a lot of interesting things in it. I'll share some of my experience as well as we go along because I, you know, I met a female at one point in time that I was interested in and she was Mormon. So, you know, of course I was going to, you know, you know, get, you know, see what it was all about. <laughs> all right. Let's get into the episode here. How one, one Mormon girl, that's one, the one experience that pushed me away from it, right. that made me leave. And, Like, believe it or not, there's a lot of, uh, what is it, inner gossip and judgment, judgmental bullshit and like little clicks of, and it's like, you know, it's almost like you're back in high school, you know what I mean? Where it's like the popular families and then, you know, the less popular family. It was, it was kind of a weird complex. So there's, would you say there's like levels of clickiness? Yeah. Like, like hierarchy within the churches itself that's i mean i think that probably is definitely uh i think it's relatable to all religions though i mean yeah for sure yeah that's definitely Um, true that's definitely true of anything but it was and from the outside looking in like they the way they all thought the elders or whatever were like the coolest 20 somethings was weird. Why does Joe sound the best ever in Vegas, by the way? Like, I don't know. You sound really good. You, we need to, you need to reset up yourself when you get back home. Joe. I love you though. You sound really good right now. So. I, I will. It sounds great. Um, but that being said, let's start this episode. Joe, you've seen this too, right? You can see the screen and everything. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can see the screen. Cool. All right. Yeah. Go kick his ass. Well, maybe he won't fight. Will he bleed? That's all we care about. <laughs> Come on, really somebody bleed. needs to wipe that f***ing smirk off his face. Yeah, little bitch. All right, I'm going to go kick his ass. Yeah, go Dan, go Dan. <laughs> all right, I got five bucks on the other kid. Who wants it? Who wants it? This part's great, though. Well, what, hey there. The token the just reach into me? his pocket. Go back a second. Go back a second. Go back a second. All right, all right. Watch token. Watch token. All right, token. I got five bucks on the other kid. Who wants it? <laughs> Token's is. digging in his pocket. He dug in his pocket. He would have <laughs> taken that bet. He believes in Stan. He believes in Stan. He believes in Stan. Yeah. Even later on in the COVID in the post COVID stuff, who shows up? Token. Token. Token believes Stan. Oh, hey there! You want to <laughs> kick the ball around with me? No, I'm. I'm gonna kick your ass. I'm gonna kick Excuse your me? ass. Excuse me. I'm gonna kick your ass, bitch. Bitch. How come you want to fight me? Oh, I get it. I'm the new kid. Yeah, I guess maybe I deserve it. Huh? 
it's really tough being in a totally new place. But I think all you guys are really cool. So I understand if there's initiation rights. Yeah. Dude, stop it. Yeah. Let him have it, Stan. Shut up, butters. <laughs> the kids are watching. Look, do what you got to do. I won't fight back. I just hope that maybe afterwards we can try to be friends someday. Oh, my gosh. What are they doing? They're just standing there talking. Fucking okay, Kermit. <laughs> what happened? I'm going over to his house for dinner tonight. What? How did that happen? He's a really nice kid. You were supposed to kick his ass, not lick his butthole. You're having dinner with his family? What kind of family is a kid like that? So as we'll get here into the Mormons there. Uh, so yes, uh, <laughs> he meets the Mormon kid. Mormon kid's a nice kid. You know, generally Mormon people, I will say, that I've met over my lifetime are, are pretty nice. Yeah. And I would say, like, there was this kid, uh, a good friend of mine, his name is Zach, before I met him. Uh, and I saw him around school and I would just be like, whatever, Mormon kid, whatever, stupid Mormon kid, whatever. And then one day, like just through a mutual friend, he ended up hanging out with us. And then like, I started hanging out with him. And then like about six months go by and he goes, Hey, you want to come to my house? And I was like, sure, bro. So I come over to his house and his dad's like a doctor and they got like jet skis and shit. And he's like, Hey, we're going to go jet skiing today. And I was like, Mormon people are great. <laughs> no, I'm obviously yeah. I'm being I'm being facetious here, but that's what I thought was interesting is you know you never can judge a book by its cover. Now he never even tried to convert me. He never was like, hey, come to church with me or did this or nothing like that. Like which I thought was nice. Like I feel like most while they will knock on your door, like they never like really bother you like when you're in actual like regular settings, which I think mm -hmm. is okay. Mm -hmm. But the whole process of them knocking on my door is kind of a nuisance scoop. A little bit. No. It can be because they like they like chase you down and then like you can see them putting up your, their bike and you're like, oh, fuck. I saw some the other day outside of uh, my apartment building. It's crazy. All right. So moving on there, as we heard there on the playground, um, you know, Stan became his friend. Like right now he's going to go to their in the parents house. And as we heard, we were going to start there. You can hear them kind of laughing there in the background, if you will. But before we get back to that, to the to the family home evening as the as the mormons in this episode like to call it let's play another clip here from some of our fans this is from trace who's been on the podcast before we've also been on his show reviewed some podcast uh, some south park trace trace pierce from trace pierce productions what you got bud hey what's up you uncle fuckers this is trace with pierce productions and i am just so glad that i was able to uh, be part of your episode that you had me on and just to be able to get to know you guys, the podcast is great. You made it to 111. That's awesome. I know that you're going to keep going. Uh, hopefully, you get to uh, the end of the series, which hopefully never ends, but you never know. And listen, you got a lot more episodes to go. So don't think about closing up shop just yet because you got a long ways to go, guys. Whenever I pop on the podcast, it always helps pass the time. And it gives me another excuse to have South Park in my life. But anyways, I got to log off. So screw you guys. I'm going home. All right. Thanks, Trace. We appreciate you. Yeah, sending Trace, in, that was nice. Sending in that, that <laughs> bed there. Um, so, Joe, as you as I had asked you there, um, you know, you've, I'm assuming you've had lots of encounters with Mormon females, individuals over the years. Yeah. 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 <laughs> any, um, any, anyone, anyone, any tales you want to regale us with here shortly? You know, other than the fact that they were largely unsuccessful, um, they have like, I thought I had a tight family unit and everything, but this is like, it, they have like, in my experience, like insanely, insanely like tight family units. Like one of them, I was having like dinner every monday night and it was like every brother and sister-in-law and cousin and everything in like the entire phoenix area i think and like it just every week too it was it was weird <laughs> i mean especially for someone who like was going out of his way to move out of his parents house as quickly as he could it, it was just very weird it sounds like it there, Joe. Uh, well, I, I can tell you that I haven't had too many experiences except for one. Uh, there was this girl that I was interested in and I started, we kind of like went on a couple of dates. And then as we started coming on a couple of dates, she invited me to church. And I was like, all right, I'll, I'll go check out this church and see what it's all about. Right. And 
I get in there and they start explaining to me the different like levels of heaven and all this other stuff. And I was like, no, like, like I don't, I can't buy into this guys. I was like, I'm sorry. I was like, doses. So yeah, that didn't work out because I just, you know, I'm not going to like make myself believe something that I don't find factual personally, you know? And while the values I think are good, because obviously it shows throughout this episode that the values of Mormon families are good. The story itself is kind of ridiculous, but that's, I mean, that's what they're making fun of both, both sides on this, this episode. That's why they make fun of the fact that it is dumb, but at the end of the episode, even Mark's going to say, or Gary, I'm sorry, is going to say like, I don't care what it was founded on. I care what it is now. So yeah, it was some interesting stuff there, <laughs> uh, but let's get ahead and get back into this uh, next part of the episode here. Ooh, five. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, oh lost your mortgage. Pay $10,000. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's Gary. Gary. Great to see you. How are you? Hey, everybody. This is my new friend. Gary. Gary. This is my mom and Gary. dad. Hi, Stan. It's so nice to meet you. And this is my brother, Mark. Hi. My sister, Jenny. Hey. My little brother, Dave. Hi. And my baby sister, oh, Amanda. Bro- older brother is Mark. Hello, Stan. I like that you pointed this out. The dad's name is Gary. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Gary. Mm-hmm. Gary. <laughs> we should put the. Uh, no, we, we found out it's definitely Karen because I thought it was Garen. Like with a G. Go ahead, skip Joe. See, like I really thought they should have gone like either full Mormon and had him Braden, Caden, Jaden, and like <laughs> Gray. <laughs> but. <laughs> Right, like to have do the uh, rhyming but, effect, yeah. if you will, like one yeah. like after another. <laughs> because another. Yeah, it, I get what you're saying. Right, Liam. Well, we yeah. all like if you live out west, you all have that Mormon friend whose family, like they all have the same name. I think. <sighs> right, all the same like syllables, or they all rhyme with each other. I get what you're saying. Oh man, now that I think about mine, fuck, god damn it! What is your sister's name? All right, so in order, uh, Shannon, Aaron, Aaliyah, Caitlin. No, Aaliyah, Ian, Lauren, and Caitlin. <laughs> they all rhyme. Okay, so your, parents, all, your parents went with uh, odds. Oh, they all fucking. <laughs> evens, the evens were all matched up and all that. It's fine. Uh, okay, let's, as we heard there now, now, they're at, now, you know, the kids are having a good time and they're kind of showing, they're going to end up showing Stan, uh, if you will, what, being a Mormon's all about. And so here's them kind of playing some music. Have to face a challenge. Our family to pass the test. Oh boy, now who is the dinner. best mom in the world? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. All right, go Dave. Yeah, little baby or whatever. Where be your guides now? Mark's your doing gamble, Shakespeare. Your songs. Hey, 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 hey. Baby's doing Russian dances. That's a great story, Sarah. All right, kids. Now how about we do some scripture readings? All right, so now we're going to get into the meat and the crust of this episode. So throughout this whole yes. episode, um, and now we're showing this on video. So if you don't get to watch this on video later on, it's because we got copyright for everything that we're about to do and all the music that probably plays throughout this episode. Now, I don't know if Dumb, 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 Dumb is copyrighted, but I have to imagine it's Viacom. They probably did because it's a cult classic song. Dum, 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 dum. So uh, if we do get copyrighted and the video stays up, that's cool. We don't care. We're not trying to monetize this. We just want to celebrate everybody, but hopefully it doesn't. If it does get it, and you're listening to this on the podcast and you have no issues because we seem to dum 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 we seem to have no issues there. Uh, but before we get into that here let's go to another quick clip here this is from our boy Joe who is from Canada who appeared on a couple of reviews with us as well hey joe my joe here suck my balls 111 episodes that's a pretty damn cool milestone if i do say so myself but as a tradition here in canada i will let Sirs Terrace and Philip, say the rest for me. I'm not your buddy, friend. He's not your friend, guy. I'm not your guy, buddy. He's not your buddy, friend. I'm not your friend, guy. Hey, what do you think you're doing? We're sucking you adrift, idiot. Maybe you can go live with the Danish. You regret this day, friend. I'm not your friend, buddy. I'm not your buddy, guy. He's not your guy, friend. I'm not your friend, buddy. We're not your buddies, 
That's a good one. I like that. That's Thank you, Joe. One. We appreciate it. I thought he would have sent us in like the, the, the princess with the pudding as is tradition, but that's as is tradition. That's funny. He's right though. Sir Terrence and Philip would be the, the speakers of the house as there. Is tradition. As is tradition. Okay. Uh, one more. Let's get another clip in here before we go back to it. This is from our social media guy, Justin, a.k.a. Ryda. Hey, what's up? It's Justin, also known as Ryda179 on Instagram. Giving a quick shout out to Suck My Balls podcast for their 109th episode. Make sure to find us on Facebook. Good job. The South Park Fans United group. Peace out. All right. Thank, thanks, Justin. They're nice and yes. short and sweet. Appreciate it. Straight to the yeah. point. Straight to the point. Yeah, we appreciate you. Short and sweet. Yeah. So, of course, Justin, a.k.a. Ryder, he always like posts a lot of our stuff on Instagram and shares it, puts in stories, and does mm-hmm. it a lot. And on Facebook, he's always on anytime like South Park actually makes a post. He literally goes on there and comments like the South Park group, like join the group, join the group. Like he's always on there. So shout out to you, Justin. We appreciate you, bro. And when we make money, we'll give you some money. But we're not making any money. I'm sorry. <laughs> all right back to the episode now here's uh well the mormon family is going to explain what's what what happens you know in the, with the book of mormon dum 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 the book of mormon all right Ow! the book of mormon what's that <laughs> what i didn't notice that that was mark screaming in the background wow, wow! like he's so excited to <laughs> talk about mormon yeah. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> the funny thing is, is, there's actually families out out there genuinely like this, but they're genuinely sweet and kind and loving people. No, I of course I agree. I know, is, which is like kind of cool, kind but of at the creepy. same time, it's like you, you. I'm sorry, like I don't want to judge or anything, but like this, when when we go through this, this is exactly why I kind of have just like. He went from one book to another saying, oh, well, you know. Well, okay, let's, let's wait till we get there. All right. All right. Let's, let's let him let's, talk let's, about let's go, let's, some let's scripture to stand here. Joseph Smith You know he claims he spoke with God and Jesus. Well, how do you know he didn't? Dum 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 dum. Joseph Smith was called a prophet. Hey, Joseph, I told my wife that you spoke with God and Jesus, and she didn't believe it. <laughs> well, it's true, I did. Where? I was out in the woods praying. I was asking God if I should be a Protestant or a Catholic or what, and suddenly God and Jesus appeared before me, and they said I should start my own church because none of the others had it right. And that's exactly how it happened. Yeah. You see? You believe it now? Well, yeah, sure. Why would he make that up? Dum, 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 Why? Many people believe Joseph. Why? Dum, 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 dum. And that night he saw an angel. Dum, 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 dum. <laughs> And please bless mother and father. And please keep our bellies full of yum-yums and luscious goodies. Yum-yums, luscious goodies. Hey! Oh my God. I am Morona. I am Morona. A Native American. A Native American. A Native American? <laughs> but your skin is white. Yes, long ago all Native Americans were white. Stupid. We all came to America from Jerusalem. And while we were here, we were visited by Christ. Jesus lived here in America? Yes, eventually my people were all killed by the other tribe of Israel. And as punishment, God turned their skin red. These are the Native Americans you know today. (laughs) There is an ancient book buried near here. All right, you get it. You get the story there. You get what's happening. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, dum, 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 dum. Um, Scoop, any comments to start? Well... Like, this is like one of those reaction type videos you see on YouTube. How many Mormon watch the episode? <laughs> the thing about like angels is, you know, when and he writes that he said, be not afraid. I wonder what they actually look like if, if they actually really look like people, because one of the some of the literal translations of some of the angels in some of the books is like they're like weird looking creatures and they're scary and they're always like, be not afraid of me and all that stuff. And you're just like, oh, um, but this Native American, though. <laughs> yeah. Well, in in when you when you go through the Book of Mormon, you find out that the Nephi is 
the Nephites, they leave them and they find the promised land, which is America. Okay. So this is a little fuck, but like I, I, I never liked that they they made Jesus white either because the motherfucker from like yo know, they are brown. Middle East. Yeah, it's from yeah. Middle East. It didn't really make sense. Well, I mean, technically, the, no. It, the story it's based on. I mean, if we want to go back like really, really far, isn't it based on Africa? Like Jesus itself, the concept of story itself is based Egypt. on Egypt, yeah. right? In Africa, well, and like we, the sun is supposed to represent. Yeah the son of god not like a person like it's supposed to represent the literal son in which we see right and like i know the garden of eden is supposed to be in iraq or iran so it's a lot of egyptian middle eastern and arabian yeah excuse our ignorance we're white guys in america so please don't judge us (laughs) (laughs) yeah and we're also not as we've told you over 110 episodes if you listen to we're not active or uh, members of any congregation or any cult? No, Probably. I wasn't. Well, I mean, obviously, well, well, no, we are in a South Park cult. I mean, true, true. The, South Park is a cult. The book of Matt Stone and Trey Parker for sure. I'm completely lapsed of everything. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's go to another clip here, really quick. From a fan sent in here before we jump back into the episode here. This is from my boy Shane, uh, who's uh, a pretty good impersonator here. Let's let's see here right, he has Shane. to say. Uh, attention students, this is your school counselor speaking. Uh, I, just, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to three very talented boys named Matthew, Joe, and Ian for their 111th episode of the Suck My Balls podcast. Mm-hmm. Okay. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. Thank you, Shane. Appreciate you, buddy. Uh, that was, that was, yeah, that was, that, was that was dope. Yeah, if someone's listening to him, I'll, you know, contact me. He does good voiceover impressions. Um, before I met that guy, I thought I did good voiceover impressions. And I was like, yo, this guy's really good. I never thought I did good, good voiceover impressions. Well, maybe you should have more confidence in yourself. Maybe. Yeah. All right. Moving on. Uh, <laughs> Stan now back at his house. He's going to come home and tell his parents, why don't we ever have like, you know, game night, Mormon nights and stuff like that? Hello? Oh, hi, Stan. Hey, Dad, how come you never told me about Joseph Smith? Who? Shut turn, we're watching Fringe! The guy who spoke to Shut turn. Well, Stan, God and Jesus don't actually speak to people. <laughs> That's not what the Harrison said. Who are the Harrison? <laughs> the new people that moved in down the street. Mr. Harrison said that Joseph Smith spoke to God and Jesus, and they told him none of the religions were right. Oh, did he now? What are they, religious kooks? They're not kooks, they're cool. I mean, how can we never have a night where we don't watch any TV and we just do stuff together and eat and drink? Yeah. We have that, Stan. It's called Friday Night Kegger. But that's just <laughs> <your friend. laughs> Shut up, Mr. Harrison said that I need to be following Heavenly Father's plan, and I don't even know what that is. All right, that does it. Where are you going? I'm going to go have a talk with this Mr. Harrison. <laughs> if he thinks he can fill my son's head with wacko religious crap, he's wrong. Randy, don't cause trouble. Let me handle this, Sharon. You got to put these cult people in their place or else they never stop. I'm going to go kick this Mr. Harrison's ass. <sighs> Oh, uh, typical white American. Oh, wait, there's one more line here. I don't want to leave out here. This part's funny. Randy walks back in and he says, it is, Mr. Harrison is a white guy, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to kick his ass. <laughs> <laughs> I was telling Scoop, Joe, I was like, you think he walked back in because either A, because he was afraid or B, because he, he wanted to make sure it wasn't a hate crime, like because it's a religion, you know what I mean? Or something like that. <laughs> I would think the first one. I don't think he would be cognizant of a hate crime. <laughs> and if he was cognizant of a hate crime, then he wouldn't have gone over to beat up a man based on his religious beliefs anyway. Well, I think he's going That's over there true. to beat him up based on like, I mean, I think it's how probably how every parent would kind of react. Right. I mean, that, you know, it's not maybe go over, beat him up, but they might react like in the sense of like, why are you filling my children's head with like religion when you're not even their children, your parent? You know what I mean? So I was like, super right on my religion. Maybe I might, I might say, you know, just might have to like drop the message, like, you know, go over there and be like, hey, just don't, don't try to like convert my kid to church. Right. Ask him to come to church with you or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. 
No, I get it. I get it. So now Randy, he goes over and he has a conversation with them and they're all super nice to him. And then they even recognize the fact, oh man, we didn't even realize what we were doing. We're from a place where everybody's just Mormon. So we're so used to it. Right. So let's play a little snippet of that. Go back two seconds. Well, look, my kid was just over at your house and he, uh... oh, your stands, dad. It's so nice to finally meet you. Karen, Mr. Marsh is here. Uh, look, I just want to tell you that. Oh, Mr. Marsh, what a treat. It's so nice to meet you. Well, Thanks. Uh, Karen just finished baking the most amazing Rice Krispie squares. With chocolate frosting. Come on out of the cold. You got to try one. Or six. <laughs> so eventually now, Randy there, he's going to become friends with them as well. They've, I wouldn't say manipulated him, but they've been so nice to him that he's going to take that information back to his parents. Or, I'm sorry, not back to his parents, but back to his family's house. Um, but in the, while he does that here, uh, you know, he's having a conversation and uh, he asks more about Joseph Smith. So let's learn a little bit more about Joseph Smith, guys. The continuing saga. Of, oh, oh, call me Randy. Call me Randy. And then the little white Love people that. from Jerusalem. Well, because he found ancient books they had written on gold plates right where the angel Moroni said they would be. <laughs> Another New Testament of Jesus Christ. What? 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 Last night, a Native American angel told me where I could find another testament of Jesus Christ. So I went out to the woods. I dug around all morning where the angel had told me to look. Hmm, maybe there isn't anything out here. Wait a tick. What's this? Wow. Inside the stone box, I found the magical where does that. Where does this come from? There, that, if you I look in the corner, in when you go back or forward, there, there's a little Christian, like a, a oval team decoder. No, um, <laughs> like the what are those? Um, the, the, the knights, is that what you're talking about? No, no, if you go forward a little bit, you'll see it here in a sec. This, this right here. Like the Knights Templar. Oh, the logo looking thing. Where the did cross? that come from? Yeah, he just like he opens it up, it shows that there's there, and then all of a sudden it's there. Oh, I don't know. I guess they just put it on there for story purposes. I thought you meant the cedar stones and the, the oval team thing. I, the call, I, would, I always call it the oval team decoder. <laughs> the Be thumbum. sure to drink your, your oval team. Exactly. That's why he got it right away. But I mean, the the Knights Templar do have a decoder and cryptic languages and stuff, though, too. So, no, there was just like a shield in the corner that appeared out of nowhere. So now Randy comes home and he's all excited and he's going to get them all to be Mormon here. This is funny. So, how'd it go, Clubber Lang? You G kicked Mr. Harrison's ass? Not exactly. <laughs> We're uh, having their family over for dinner tomorrow night. <laughs> Sharon, did you know this guy Joseph Smith found a New Testament to the Bible buried here in America? What are you talking about? Well, it's just that the Harrisons are really nice people, and you should see how loving and together their family is. I, I think there's something to that religion. That's what they made me think, too. No, all right, that does it. From now on, our family is Mormon. Fucking Randy, all of a sudden, <laughs> just jumped to conclusions. He's so willing to change his whole family's lifestyle, Joe. It's nuts. Yep. Yeah, but once he finds out he can't drink beer, we'll see where he stands on that. <laughs> we'll see where he stands on that. And no coffee. Yeah. No uh, soda. No coffee. Well, their thing on coffee is they it's like they think that the oils and shit. Like my dad used to say, Oh, well, it stains in metal. What do you think it does to your colon? I'm like, yo, it, you can wipe it off metal and then stain it, which yeah. don't know. Like, and actually, like it's been scientifically proven that coffee is good for you. And, and I'm fairly sure that my colon does a pretty good job cleaning everything out of my system. Well, actually, it's your pancreas. Because uh, yeah. my pancreas is always there for me. Ba -ba -da -da. Secreting okay, those weird enzymes. Ba -ba -da. Secreting those hormones, too. You got the that flow. The carbohydrate flow, flow. Pancreatic. Juice flow flow into the duodenum. I'm so insulin. glad Joe's this is why Joe's my friend. I'm so glad he got the weird owl reference. <laughs> yes. Oh no, pancreas is a great song. I got it too. 
No, I'm just. I I, love. I really, really love my pancreas. (laughs) It's on the same. It's on the same album as the White Nerdy album. I remember having that album when I was a kid. Fun fact is, uh, Running with Scissors helped shape my childhood. Oh, and then his movie VHF. Oh fuck yeah, dude! Loved (laughs) VHF is my VHF is great. Right, dude. Like when I when I and then when I discovered Bad Hair Day, that was it. They were so ahead of their time and underappreciated. Oh crap, guys! Oh shit, Uh-oh. we're being hacked. Uh oh, fuck. Oh, no, Hamin. That's right. Hear me now. It's the Ayatollah bin Hamin reaching out to the SMB on their number one eleven, the Suck My Balls podcast, reaching new heights. One hundred and eleven episodes. They said it's the podcast that couldn't be. But no, it's the podcast that shouldn't be. So that's right. Get back to smoking your Tegrity Farms marijuana. And I know you killed Kenny, you bastards. So hear me now. That's right. Keep going all the way to the end. And you can all suck on my chocolate salty balls. Mm. Screw you guys. I'm going home. Congratulations on 111 episodes, infidels. YOLO. (laughs) Love it. Love it. That's great. Thanks. The hacker I mean, he just hacked us. Shout out to Hacker. Shout out to Ben. He just jumped in and did that. I Thanks, like, Ben. Fucking yeah. Always hacks Thank shit. you, Ben Hameen. Fucking next time don't hack our shit though. Next time don't hack our shit though. Hacker I mean. Just ask. We can let you in. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Just ask. We can, we, can, we, can, we, can, we, can, we can let you, you know, jump on jump on board. It'd be, it'd be pretty cute. It'd be pretty cute. Be pretty cute. All right, uh, one more uh, before we go back into the episode. This one's from our sponsor, the Big Boys Club. Shout out to our sponsor, the Big Boys Club. Well, yeah. Yeah. You can check out uh, bigboysclub.com. Visit the bigboysclub.com. Use our code suck my balls pod. You'll save 20% off your order. What do you got for us, uh, Mark? What it do, y'all? It's your big boy Mars from Mars, Big Boys sorry. Club. Just want to give a big shout out for the 100th, 11th episode to our boys, Suck My Balls Pod. Much appreciated, guys. Continue supporting them like they support us. Much love and stay baked. Baked, you boy. That's it. We like it. Thank you, Mars. We appreciate you. Yeah, Mars. What's up, boy? All right, let's get back to the episode. Now, here's what happens when Stan and approaches all of his friends about the change to his lifestyle now. Hey, Stan, how was your date last night with the new kid? Shut up, dude. They're a nice family, and Gary is actually really smart and talented. Uh, you guys, I think Stan's in love. Yeah, did you make out with him too? What's the big deal? Can I have other friends? You guys should give Gary a chance. Hey, Stan. Oh, here's Stan's little girlfriend now. Hey, guys. Stan, I remember you said last Dicks. night that you lost your wallet, so I made you a new one. I carved a picture of John Elway into the leather on the front. Yeah, that's kind of gay. Wow, you made this? But I mean, that's still kind of cool. I so cute together. Hey, my family's on their way over to the fire station to donate blood. You want to come along? Uh, I don't think so, Gary. I have to look. Oh, this part's great. Hey, guys! <laughs> we painted our faces! <laughs> oh, my God. I'm a lion! I'm an alien! Hey, just what the heck am I supposed to be? <laughs> <laughs> what about the mom? Uh, no, I've got a lot to do. Well, Gary, you want to just hang out with your friend Stan? Oh, well, I'd like to, but... Oh, man, I would miss you guys so much! <laughs> I miss you too, Gary! Oh, we'll all see each other tonight when we go to Stan's house for dinner. Stay and play with your friends, Gary. <laughs> yeah, have a good time, boys. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Our faces are painted. <laughs> <laughs> that part always gets it. Our faces are painted. Wow. So what do you guys want to do? Uh, that's cool. We're going to leave you two lovebirds alone. The three of us have to go put in some volunteer work at the homeless shelter. Oh, cool. I'm going to do that tomorrow. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Carmen, you savage asshole. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's horrible. <laughs> All right. And then we continue on here as they're walking down the street. Stan's still interested in Joseph Smith. He wants to know more about the story. So here's the continuing story, Joseph Smith. Plates into the Book of Mormon. Yeah, but how? <laughs> dum, 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 dum. What's this all about, Mr. Smith? Mr. Harris, can you keep a secret? Well, sure I can. I have, in my possession, an ancient book written on gold plates that tells of Jesus Christ's second coming, here, in America. In America? Really? That sounds kind of... Dum, 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 dum. It's true. 
and I'm going to translate the plates and publish it into a book for the whole world to read. Now, I know you have a lot of money, Mr. Harris, and I'm just going to need a little bit to pay for the publishing costs. I don't know. How do you expect to translate it? With these. Rocks? They're not rocks. They're seer stones given to me by an angel. With them, God allows me to translate the plates into English. Watch. You take this quill and paper and write down what I say. Sit here. I have the golden plates here in this hat. I need to have them somewhere dark so I can feed the spiritual light. Really? Now, when I put the seer stones into the hat, the ancient letters light up and change to English, which I can then read to you. Wow! Ooh, I'm seeing the light. Stupid. Oh, okay, write this down. Stupid. And so, it was that Christ appeared before the Nephites. And that's how the book of Mormon was written. Dum, 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 dum. <laughs> like literally that's how it was written that's how it was seriously written <laughs> joseph smith went out into the woods like legit legit <laughs> the story is legitimate joseph smith went out into the woods prayed what religion he should be he was appeared by uh god just when you looked at me though was a serious this you were like that's how they did it. That is how they did it. <laughs> and you believe this. I don't, it was hard at first because when I heard that he had to put it in a hat and he had to read it alone <laughs> and nobody else could see it. And he had, he lost the 116 pages. And it's like, even I thought, you know, it's written on parchment. People could tell if it was your handwriting and someone forged it because back then, like, you wrote with a fucking quill and, right. you know, it would be really easy. And if he couldn't just redo it, <laughs> like word for word, then, oh, but I had to switch to the book of Nephi, which is kind of the same thing. So if you're like reading those last 116 pages versus the new stuff, you're like, well, it's similar. You know, and I'm just like, uh, that was really, that was, that for me was really hard. But then you think about it. What if it like an ultimate test by God? to believe into some crockpot story and then like when you do die and you're sitting down to satan and he's he is like no yeah the right answer was mormons and you're just like mormons we're all looking at each other and we're like fuck i was kind of right when i was sitting there uh, <laughs> anyway that being said <laughs> dumb 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 joe any comments on the mormonism stuff there no it, it's uh pretty much what i was always told when i would ask like well how did it come about and everything and that it's pretty spot on from what i was told yeah uh well you know i'll tell you what though i'm i would oh i'm more open to like being friends with a mormon than i ever am with a scientologist <laughs> I, I don't think i could actually be friends with a scientologist to be honest with you i don't know and if you're a scientologist mm -hmm. and you're listening to our show i really wouldn't be afraid get out or, yeah like stop listening to our show please because i get out I really don't want you to if you're a scientologist and you're listening you're already breaking one of the tenets of your religion because scientology hates south park oh yeah there you go I would so also, you probably wouldn't even be listening to our show i would so also Jesus. say if you're listening to uh if you're a scientologist in general i mean dum, dum, you're dumb 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 Dum 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 dum. Anyway, so see, like my whole view on Beck changed a lot when I found out he was second generation Scientologist. Like I had, I had, like I can't watch Giovanni Ribisi without thinking, like, what? Nani, nani. All right, here we go. Next night at the marshes. Now. Four, pay one thousand dollars life but it's called tax. living instead isn't this great you guys our first family home evening i want to watch tv we're not watching tv we're mormons now and we're, we're having family now. home evening dad did you know that that joseph smith guy read the book of mormon out of a hat and your turn sharon your it's turn sharon. the book of mormon says a lot of strange stuff like that adam and eve lived in jackson county missouri yes but school taught me that the first man and woman lived in yes. Africa. but you can't believe everything school tells you stan your turn, Shelly. Ooh, that must be the Harrisons. <laughs> well, like the Garden of Eden was supposed to be close to like the Nile River in that region. What? 
Like the, the Garden of Eden was supposed to be close to like the Nile, you know, because there was always myths back in Egypt of like, you know, oases and stuff around there. Well, that's what Joe referenced earlier, right? That it's supposed to be in the Middle East. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So. Um, really? Well, that's just because he hasn't heard the best part about the Joseph Smith story. D- the one that proves he was for real. All right. This is the last part of the Joseph Smith story we're going to play. You remember Martin Harris, the rich man who wrote down what Joseph Smith read out of the hat? Yeah. See, after he was done, he took some of the pages of what would become the Book of Mormon home. Martin went home to his wife. Dum, 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 dum. And showed her pages from the Book of Mormon. Dum, 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 dum. And so Joseph Smith put his head into a hat and, and read to me what the golden plate said. All right, so as you can hear there, we, we, as they continue on, you know, as far as uh, the story here, like that guy gives it to his wife and his wife is like, OK, well, how do we know we he didn't make it up? And he was like, well, why would he do that? <laughs> so, <laughs> so he tells him the story about uh, an upbeat tune playing in the background, as you're going to hear is uh, smart, 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 because his wife is going to say, well, why don't we hide the pages? And if these plates are really real, then he'll be able to rewrite the exact same words unfortunately joseph smith tells them no i was not able to write the exact same words and god's pissed at me now that i let somebody else see this so i have to go think and then he goes and thinks in the middle of the night then he comes back and then he reconvenes and rewrites the book of mormon again am i right is that that, that accurate scoop yeah but the thing is, is what's kind of what kind of gets you to come back to a little bit of like, all right, maybe, maybe it's pop. Because if you, if you, God kind of has a sense of humor. We all know that, right? God kind of has a sense I don't of humor. Know. And this is kind of funny and a little ironic, but like they all die um, broke, uh, living horrible, par- prosecuted lives, tarred and feathered and driven out of towns that's fucked up yeah i was gonna say wasn't joseph smith lynched he wasn't lynched he was shot Uh, outside out out of a window and yeah they they were hunted they all and they never renounced their faith in any of what they saw all of the eight witnesses and everything at the start of the book that sign off and say that they saw they all completely died believing and the guy martin harris he he actually came back and he on his deathbed says he could have he could have been rich. He could have been rich if he would have done something and like renounced or whatever. But he's he died on his deathbed saying that he's what he saw was true. And the book that they translated was all true, you know. So that's kind of where you can be like, all right, well, as crazy as it was, you guys still kind of died over something crazy. But not all right. I can see a faith being built around that, you know. Wait. Smith got mad and told Martin he needed to go pray. Dum 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 Wait, Mormons actually know this story and they still believe Joseph Smith was a prophet? Well, sure. The story proves it, doesn't it? No, it proves he did make it all up. Are you blind? Well, Stan, it's all a matter of faith. No, it's a matter of logic. If you're going to say things that have been proven wrong, like that the first man and woman lived in Missouri and that Native Americans came from Jerusalem, then you better have something to back it up. All you've got are a bunch of stories about some asswipe who read plates nobody ever saw out of a hat and then couldn't do it again when the translations were hidden. Hey, Stan, don't denounce our religion. <laughs> I don't want to be Started it. <laughs> and of course, the Mormons end up saying here, you don't have to be. You have your own rights, rights and views and you can be happy as you want. And Stan's like, Oh, just stop it. I'm tired of this bullshit. You lure people in with this happy act just so that way you can like prey on my idiots like my dad. <laughs> but they, they give some emotional damage here. Yeah, it's great you have your own beliefs. Yeah. For the oh, stop it. That's another thing. Why do you have to be so freaking nice all the time? It isn't normal. You just weasel people into your way of thinking by acting like the happiest family in the world and being so nice to everyone that you just blindside dumb people like my dad. Yeah. It's all okay. game. Who's up for a water balloon fight? Yeah. <laughs> I like how they just have no remorse there. Like they don't care. <laughs> Gary was kind of sad. He kind of was. Maybe he can't be friends with them because they're so close minded, which, you know. 
That's true. It's kind of sad. All right. Well, let's wrap up this episode with basically one of our one of the reasons why we started this episode too, because our why we started this whole podcast. Just it's got one of our patent catchphrases that was used for 110 episodes in our intro as well. Oh, hey Stan. Where's your best buddy, Carrie? I'm not hanging around that kid anymore. Oh no, you guys broke up? You guys were right, okay? The new kid's a douche. Now I just gotta find a way to keep him away from me. Hey, Stan. Oh, brother. Uh-oh, the jilted lover returns. Listen, I just wanted to let you know you don't have to worry about me trying to be your friend anymore. I don't? Look, maybe us Mormons do believe in crazy stories that make absolutely no sense. And maybe Joseph Smith did make it all up. But I have a great life and a great family. And I have the Book of Mormon to thank for that. The truth is, oh. I don't care if Joseph Smith made it all up. Because what the church teaches now is loving your family, being nice, and helping people. And even though people in this town might think that's stupid, I still choose to believe in it. All I ever did was try to be your friend, Stan. But you're so high and mighty, you couldn't look past my religion and just be my friend back. You got a lot of growing up to do, buddy. Suck my balls. <laughs> yes. Damn, that kid is Miss- too, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sorry there. If you're watching the video, Scoop seems to be having some sort of smoke Olympics here with the fucking cup. He's fucking big out of his mind here. He's got to every time he comes yeah, over. At least I've know, been active in the podcast. Every time he comes over, he does <laughs> that. You know, he's like, he'll be, I'll be like, oh, dude, I'm fucking blow it on my fucking coffee table. And fucking <laughs> and shit. I'm like, I, 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 I couldn't tell if that was steam rising off the coffee or if he was drinking while no, exhaling out of his nose. You're just blowing vape into it. Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, that's your review, your wrap up of the episode of All About the Mormons. I hope you enjoyed <laughs> laughing along with us there. We've got a big clip here, though, before we go into oh, our sponsorship. Yeah. This is the biggest one. This is why you might be listening to it. I don't know. But if you are, we appreciate it. And this is your first time listening to Suck My Balls, the South Park Review. We've got a special musical rendition for you to celebrate with us. So take it away. <laughs> Let's be the kid. Ladies and gentlemen, that was, of course, Fernando Euphret. You can follow him on TikTok and Instagram. And uh, he does a lot of Cartman parody songs. So shout out to Fernando for sending that into us. That was awesome. We appreciate (laughs) you. That was pretty, pretty, pretty cool. But we're going to go to a quick word from our sponsor. And we'll be right back on the other side with some more uh, pop culture trivia and anything else. And some more clips from our fans. We'll be right back. Yo, Matt, Ian, Joe. What's up? It's Adam, the sinister one. You remember from the One Up Rewind gaming podcast that me and Matt used to do last year. I'm alive and back out of hiding, and I'm here to congratulate you guys on 111 weeks of getting people to suck your balls. And suck them hard, they did. Keep up the good work. Hope to hear great things from you guys in the future. Suck my balls. Dum, 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 dum. Subscribe to Suck My Balls, a South Park review on Spotify, Apple's, iTunes, anywhere you want to download a podcast, just type that in, subscribe to our feed, and you'll get the latest, greatest episode each and every week. You can also listen to us on YouTube and go back and watch some videos or any of our library. It's all there. Suck My Balls, a South Park review. Hey guys, we just want to take this quick time out here just to recognize our sponsor. What's that? Well, who's our sponsor? Big Boys Club. Big Boys Club. The Big Boys Club. The Big Boys Club. That's right, the Big Boys Club. Big. You can use our code Suck My Balls Pod and you'll save how much, Joe? 20 motherfucking percent. 20, 20, 20. You heard it right. 20%. 20%. That's right. 20%. Two zero. Two zero. That's one fifth off your order just by typing in Suck My Balls Pod at thebigboysclub.com. What does the Big Boys Club have? Well, they've got hats, they've got shirts, they've got stickers, tons of different apparel. They've got mystery boxes. And if you use that code, according to Scoop, it brings it down to $49.95. So use Suck My Balls Pod code at the Big Boys club.com big boys not just a brand a lifestyle 
lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. That's right. It's a lifestyle. I may have been too big to do that. Once again, shout out to our sponsor, the Big Boys Club. Use our code SuckMyBallsPod and you'll save 20% off your order. BigBoysClub.com. Not just a brand, it's a lifestyle. You boy. Joe, you want to read some trivia? Sure can. I only got a couple things. Um, yeah, yeah. So uh, obviously this isn't the first, nor was it the last time that Matt and Trey um, – had Mormonism as one of their focuses in a project. Uh, Actually, before South Park even became too big of a thing, they had their 1997 film, Orgasmo, Stunt Uh, Cock. Hey, hey, uh, uh, I don't want to sound queer or nothing, but unicorns kick ass. (laughs) (laughs) And if you haven't seen... But I'd like to come home and make love to you tonight. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and if you haven't seen orgasmo it's on stars it's about 85 minutes it's totally worth it um matter of fact i'll probably watch it on my plane Shut up, boy. To colorado Shut up, boy. Um, they and they um also have the much more well-known 2011 tony award-winning broadway musical the book of mormon which again great Great piece of uh, theater. Um, the series creators, Matt and Trey, have revealed in interviews that their fascination with Mormons and LDS stems from growing up in Colorado, where they met numerous LDS practitioners from the neighboring states and uh, surrounding area. Um, a few of the claims regarding uh, LDS and Mormonism as Scoop uh, alluded to earlier are at least semi-accurate. Joseph Smith did allegedly trans did translate 116 pages from the book of Lehi and then could not reproduce the text. He claimed God was angry and would make him translate from the book of Nephi, which was similar, but different. When questioning this newly found belief, Stan says that he learned in school that modern humans came out of Africa, not the Garden of Eden in Jackson County, Missouri, which is where Mormons believe is Adam Andi Aman. Right, exactly. And the episode... What? I don't know. And anyway, you don't think yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Go ahead. I don't think that the Garden of Eden I ever learned was in Jackson County, Missouri. No, oh, you mean the line? Yeah, I think yeah. that I think Stan was just exaggerating that yeah. for the fact because he was saying it's coming oh, to. Right. He was like, he was using like, he was utilizing the exaggeration of saying I don't believe Jesus came to Jackson, Missouri. So he's just saying Garden of Eden. I don't think he meant like the literal sense. Yeah, that that may have been something. Um, and the. Episode is sometimes called All About the Mormons. All About the Mormons. Even though it's called All About, but I call it All About the Mormons. Which yeah. is how we retitled this as well. Uh, Scoop, read us some references to pop culture. Gary Harrison's family was playing a board game called Living, which is a reference to the game of life. Yep. Which, I mean, it's kind of fun if you have a kid. I mean, it's not bad. It's not fun. When you get your, your ass kicked by your daughter, though, it's a different story. When Stan comes back, home the family is watching friends eh. never i'm sorry guys i never like that show i understand sharon marsh calls randy clubber lang the name of mr t's character <laughs> rocky three yep and that, that's the weird thing because in that one she seems to be encouraging randy's yeah. random acts of violence and then like we see her many other times like randy grow up Later on right, in, the, right, in the summer right. socks an episode where or where they playing the baseball, mm-hmm. you know, when Randy be fucking fights. I didn't hear no bell. Dad and all the fucking dads in different fucking so cities. Oh, I thought this I was thought this was America. This was America. Go ahead, scoop. Right. Gary's brother Mark performs a section of Hamlet during family home evening, which was a pretty accurate. Seen from Hamlet, he's been doing his movie pretty good. And then I'll wrap this up here. Randy checks if Mr. Harrison is a white man, which is a previous episode. Cartman's silly hate crime satirizes how to attack on a minority immediately becomes a hate crime, regardless of intent. Okay, so I was right there. Yeah. All right. So there's your continuity references to pop culture and trivia. Before we uh, wrap up this thing, let's hear a couple more clips from some of our different peoples here. This one here is from, uh, well, this is going to shock you guys. This is from our first. Um, one of our first providers, Voices of Misery. They, they sent us in something. Oh, here we go. Here we go. 
Hey, what's up, everybody? It's a nerd here from the Voices of Misery podcast. And you know what? I'm just as shocked as you are to hear my voice on this network at this time right here, right now. But today's a very special day. Mm. And I want to say congratulations to our good friend, Matt Schaffer, on 100 episodes. I can't believe 100, 100 episodes. 111, 111. Most podcasts don't even last 100 minutes before they're retired, dead, and buried. Big ass graveyard of podcasts out there. But you know what? You made it happen. Your super producer, Matt Schaffer, and I can't believe he did it with a podcast called Suck My Balls. Right, I mean, that's, that's right. something I say on a regular basis to my spouse. It never happens. never comes to fruition. But I'm glad this podcast did. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> God damn it, I can't believe the name is Suck My Balls. <laughs> and it lasted this long. But you know what? If anybody can polish a turd and make it interesting and entertaining, very entertaining <laughs> podcast, it is the super producer, Matt Schaffer. Buddy. Congratulations on 100 episodes, and I wish you all the best from the Voices of Misery podcast, and I hope you guys make it 100 more. Take care, and we, you know, no matter what happens, we love you, man. Take care. Thanks, thanks, guys. We appreciate it. Wasn't, wasn't ready for that wasn't comment ready. in wasn't there, ready. buddy. That was my, great. My uh, wife, I ask her all the time, you. but she never lets me do that. Thank you. I needed that. That was awesome. Uh, well, <laughs> like... Maybe there needs to be some give and take there. Yeah, I, I don't know. I would agree. Uh, let's go to the next clip here. This is from uh, Scott Ward, who's like, got a huge following on Twitter, like 30, 40,000 followers. And he follows us and shares our stuff and produces and helps, you know, shares our content. And he actually writes a blog. I found out it's like on a sub stack. So go follow, like find Scott Ward on Twitter and find his sub stack. He's a good writer. But here's his, uh, his message to us. Hey, guys, Scott Ward here. Just want to say congratulations on making it to 111 episodes. That is huge. You know, as someone who supported you guys from the very start, uh, well, I mean, I tried to, uh, you know, to be honest, I didn't think you guys would even make it to 11 episodes. So, you know, we're right. that times 100. So congratulations on that. You know, it takes incredible hard work, passion and dedication. And, uh, you know, speaking of hard work, you guys by far are the hardest working South Park podcasters I know. Yeah, you're, um, right. you're also the only South Park podcasters, I know, so take that how you will, but <laughs> I just want to say congratulations. Um, you know, you guys knocking it out of the park every episode. And um, yeah, you know, if, if you know me, you know I love South Park, but you know what I love more? The Suck My Balls podcast. All right. All right. Congrats all right. again, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. We Thanks, Scott. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. all that. you did you do for us, man. That, that was nice of you. All right. Well, before we get into more clips, Scoop, what did you like about this episode of All About Mormons? Well, as we ended, wrapped up the show, Gary's statement to Stan, you know, you got a lot of growing up to do, buddy. So that's my, my balls. Probably my favorite part of the episode. Um, I love the... Dum, 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 dum. Dum, it dum, caught dum. me every fucking time dum, in dum, the dum, episode. Dum, dum. When Joseph Smith, uh, dum, 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 the, the dumbing down of the whole story about Joseph Smith is pretty funny too. So, those um, are some of my favorite. I liked uh, our pa- our faces are painted like that part. <laughs> always gets me. I don't know what it is. Just like I remember one. that from this episode when Mark says our faces are painted. Um, I like when Cartman sees them for the first time. Oh my god! <laughs> like when he first sees them, Mormon. I like all of Cartman's quips. Oh, you gonna go hang out? You get your gift hand? And Kyle even gets on it too. Like they're all just ragging on him. And by the way, Kenny. I mean, he was in this episode, but he didn't have one Zero word. Line. Didn't say one thing. So there's no what Nothing. did Kenny say this week, guys? Sorry no. about that. Sorry. Uh, but that's what I kind of like. I like you know I I do like the fact that Randy was easily like manipulated. He just jumped all of a sudden. Okay, we're gonna be Mormon <laughs> just after one night. Uh, Joe, what do you like? Uh, typical stuff? Randy. Yeah. Um, you guys touched on a lot of what I liked about it. There were small things that always make me laugh and pop, um, especially the youngest child, the youngest Harrison baby taking the pacifier out or whatever and the saying, hello, Stan. That's right up there with Cartman's youngest doing right. like, Fuck you, Uncle Kyle. <laughs> Thank you, Uncle K. Thank you, Cat. Thank you, I got. Thank you, Uncle K. That's yeah, you're right. You're right. Hello, Stan. That baby moment was pretty good, actually. You're right. Yeah. All right. Well, Hello, any, Stan. anything you didn't like, Joe? Um, this is one of the stronger episodes. There's not a lot in it that I don't like. I can't think of anything that jumps up right away, and it was. I like how they didn't just completely bash the religion because there are, as 
scoop has been said there are good things a lot about a lot they're some of the nicest people i've met they have like incredibly tight-knit family units and you know there is a lot going on and um gary's point at the end is is pretty poignant and it's pretty good and like okay they're not I mean, yes, they have missionaries and everything, but like most of them aren't actively trying to convert anyone. They're just trying to live. And it's like, yeah, man, you can either, you can do whatever you want. We don't really care, but right. you got to grow up. No, I, I understand. I, and I agree with that. Uh, you know, for the most part, like, like I'm totally, obviously I don't care if anybody's religious, any fashion, you do whatever you need to do make yourself happy. Uh, I mean, I don't like some of their practices and trying to like knock on people's doors and invade your privacy to try to convert you. Um, I feel like, yeah, yeah. Like, especially in 2022, I feel like that model is outdated at this point. A little bit, probably, you know, at least here in America, you know, um, and my, my other biggest gripe when it comes to, and I, I will say um, from what I've seen and, and heard, at least from a, international standpoint i feel like the 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 church of latter-day saints does a good job on missions would you say scoop like actually going out into the world and trying to help people Mm -hmm. i feel like they do a good job there but unfortunately a lot of that doesn't seem to translate here locally or regionally or nationally at least to a point where people feel like it would be like they get more they should get more accolades you know what i'm saying most mission work doesn't really right. get any public appeal like that. The only time you hear about mission work is when missionaries have been kidnapped or don't come right. home or something like that. All right. And um, the youth uh, interactions and stuff that they had in the church were actually really awesome and cool. Um, there was a temple dedication I got to go to in Manhattan and we got to go on Broadway and I got to dance the salsa with a very cute girl that I had a pretty big crush on, too. I got to, <laughs> I got to touch her hips. I got a little blood rush this was, in the places. This was, it was new for Scoop. It was, it was uh, dude, I was 14, 15, maybe 16. Scoop had only hugged his teddy bear at this point. Yeah, you know. Uh, um, <laughs> stupid. It was a lot of fun. And, you know, and there was, like, weekly... Um, uh, get togethers and activities like basketball and stuff like they have a youth basketball league where, you know, each church gets their young men okay. and they, you know, we get it. That was the other thing I was going to say. There were some Mormon cool, boys. Actually. So oh. There's an aspect of it that, yeah, a lot of more like Dan Marley's mm-hmm. Mormon or he was. I'm yeah. Sure they can. Oh yeah. They, they can a lot of all dude. Like a lot of the missionaries like were in college mm-hmm. playing basketball and stuff. And they're like, Oh, I'm going to go on my mission. And like, you know, uh, when the missionaries do come to town and there's some of those ballers that are like super tall, dude, they're a lot of fun to like play and hang out with and stuff. For sure. It was, there's some, Danny there's H some went positives to, be like, to it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. There's definitely. All right. Well, before you tell us what you didn't like about this episode, let's go to another clip here. Um, this is from our boy Wayne noon at the rat salad review. We were on his network as well. Wayne, Wayne. what do you have to say? Everybody. It's Wayne noon from rat salad review network. The network that Suck My Balls used to be on until they got to episode 100 and then they thought, oh, we're just so big now that we can just leave Rat Salad Review Network and just go on our own because we're just so huge. Well, you know what? Suck my balls. You can suck my balls, okay? You left us high and dry. Now I have to find shows to fill your spot and take up other spots because you guys dropped the ball and you think you're going to be so great all on your own now. Well, you know what? Maybe you will be. And I appreciate everything that you guys did with us. And uh, I had a lot of fun uh, having you guys on our network. And, uh, you know, we miss you, but good luck to you guys on your own. And uh, here's to 111 more episodes. I think there's more South Park episodes than that. But it's good to see if you get to 111 more. All right. But again, good luck, guys. And uh, take care. Bye. Also, you can suck my balls. Bye. <laughs> Thanks, Wayne. Love you, buddy. That's awesome. <laughs> But you can present them. Check my buys, Wayne. What'd you Check say? my buys. Well, go ahead, John. Sorry. Present them. I did them. Present them. Exactly. All right. We got <laughs> Scoop. What did you not like about this episode? Oh, well, kind of like what Joe was saying. This is a very solid overall good episode. There wasn't too much to uh, not like. Um, maybe if Kenny had a line or something. But other than that, no, this is probably a good solid like top 70, top 85 
episode where you know not too much that bugs me about it and it's funny and i really enjoy it well i would i would say the only thing i didn't like about this episode that just wasn't more cartman kyle and kenny in general yeah. i think that would have been funny to have that, them involved yeah. in some way uh you know and if you're kyle and you're stan's best friend stan got you out of a fucking cult remember That's true blaintology Stan, Stan you out of a cult you know blaintology i'm not saying mormonism as a cult but if you thought it was that bad then why don't you try to help your friend why don't you help your friend fucking kyle and he wonders Fuck why Stan leaves him post-covid um <laughs> uh joe is this in your top 50 uh definitely top 50 i'd probably go like top 35 okay Ooh, yeah yeah, yeah. So, i can i can put it up there too yeah, i'd I say top 50 agree. for me yeah. personally personally okay okay well we got a couple more clips here to wrap up the episode before we say goodbye here so let's go to this is the trans archist i think is what there she's that's what her name is hey what is up it is miss tia the trans archist here want to give a shout out to my boys over there at the suck my balls podcast a very very big congratulations 111 episodes huge milestone Best South Park review show you're going to get out there. Let's see, 111 more and 111 more and 111 more. But there's just one little problem with that, and that is Simpsons already did it. And if you don't like Suck My Balls, then you can suck my lady bass. Suck My Balls podcast. Much love, guys. Keep keep up the great work. Apparently, chicks listen to us too, so that's good that's to awesome. know. That's good to know. That's, that's good to know. <laughs> that's good, good to, to know. know. Chicks listen. To us. All right, well, shout out to you, Miss T. We appreciate you. And then we got Thanks, uh, Yeah, I think we got uh, we got two more clips here. This is from Rad Rob, who oh, we were on Rad his Rob. network as well. Let's hear what Rad Rob had to say. Hey guys, Rad Rob here from the multiple podcasts from the Rad Rob Radio Network, which suck my balls, a South Park review used to be part of. They had asked me if I wanted to syndicate their show on my network. And I said, well, yeah, sure. I don't think anybody will listen to it, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was a pretty good partnership, even though I rarely uploaded the podcast and uh, usually just did a four or five episode dump did. once a month. But Something hey, you know, I <laughs> still put it out there and it got you know, some decent numbers. I mean, nothing spectacular, but yeah, I did pretty well. Uh, but in all seriousness, uh, 111 episodes is a pretty big deal. I mean, I've done like 450 myself, but I mean, who's counting? I, I, I'm not trying to show anybody up or not, but you know, 111, that's a, that's a pretty big deal. So to MSG, Joe and Ian, keep up the great work. Hopefully you guys are doing well on your own, at least better than you did here. And, uh, hopefully you'll uh, you know get to uh, you know, two hundred eleven or, or you know however long you want to do it. Seriously, guys, um, good job, great show, ish, and uh, yeah, keep up the good work. Talk about us. thanks, yeah, Rob. Thanks, Rob. We appreciate you. And we got one more here. Okay, the last one. This one was sent in. We had Andrew Bello on for the Starvin' Marvin episode. Mm-hmm. So Andrew Bello sent us in a clip, and apparently he's got a really good friendship with Enzo Amore. So Enzo Amore also sent us in a message as well. Oh, so fuck. Here we go. Enzo, really? That's sick. We're going to find out. What's going on, everybody? Episode 111. That's 111 for those of you keeping score at home of the Suck Map Pass podcast i mean it's just awesome it's awesome to have been on an episode or two it's a great podcast it's a great i mean honestly as much as i love natty and all i mean it's it's very it's very good source material right like i mean you're talking about probably the greatest show of all time it's quite the undertaking dare i say it takes some gas in order to even do a podcast about such a grandiose spectacle like south park and they, you know, the, the voice they do a here, great job, right? obviously. Yeah. And it's fantastic. It's and, rain, uh, 111 baby. episodes. Listen, I've done podcasts, done a lot of podcasts. Not all of them make it to 111 episodes. Not all of them are nearly on the level of the Suck My Balls Fuck. podcast on the next level, dare I say. But um, I got I got I got a guest here who wants to just do a, a quick run in, but congratulations to to everybody involved. May there be many, many more episodes to come, as obviously there are many, many more episodes to cover. And uh, hopefully South Park keeps going and Sec Map as keeps uh, going along with it. But uh, I, I, I'm, by the way, am the Andrew Bello, your resident god of thunder. You can find me on the Twitter machine at the Andrew Bello if you must. And, and my name 
is Enzo Amore, and I am a certified G and a bona fide stud, and you can't teach that. And I love the Suck My Balls podcast. I listen to that shit every day. I listen to it while I'm sucking balls. What, <laughs> what the? Hey, it is what it is. 2022. We're going to do is what it is. Right, is that? What the hell happened here? <laughs> How you doing? I'm not great. All right. I, I'm sorry. That went off the rails. Suck my balls. <laughs> I mean, not literally, but God damn it. I feel icky. I feel like uh, 111 I, episodes. That's awesome. We'll, we'll we'll end on a high note. All right, peace. Thanks, Andrew. That was that was, that was good. Fucking awesome. That was good. We saved. I saved that. By the way, like I had to save part of the the, the, the whatever the suck my balls part or the Enzo part. I had to save it because like it's just funny. My name is Enzo Amore, <laughs> and I am a certified G and a bona fide stud, <laughs> and you stuff. can't. Teach that. Teach. And I love the Suck My Balls podcast. I listen to that shit every day. I listen to it while I'm sucking balls. Whoa, what the? Hey, it is what it is. 2022, what are you going to do? Right, is that? What the hell happened here? So that'll be played at some point in the podcast in the future for drops. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on our 111th episode. Thank you so much for joining us on another edition of. Check my files. Check my files. Check my files. Check my files. I, of course, am your host in the heat and I can't be beat. I'm your guy who's high where the air is dry. Your boy, MSG. Follow me on Twitter and on the gram. At Matthew underscore Sheffer. You can follow us as a podcast at link tr.ee slash South Park Pod. Just go to Linktree, type in South Park Pod, and you'll get us. Or, of course, you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Suck My Balls Pod and on Facebook at South Park Pod. But if you just want to go to Linktree, type in South Park Pod, all of our stuff's there. We made it right and nice and easy for you. Of course, my boy. Scoop. Scoop. So check it out. You can actually follow me on Twitter at your lyrics underscore lie. There you go. Yeah. Scoop's got so Twitter. Come hang out with me on Twitter. Come hang out and argue with him on Twitter. Uh, Joe, uh, no, no arguing. No anymore. arguing. Okay. Joe? Joe? Uh, I am on Twitter at JV Vernola. I am on Instagram <laughs> at JA Vernola. <laughs> Um, I was saying, hold then, on. I was trying to uh, enjoy your song properly, but <laughs> you just kept going. It's fine. <laughs> oh, Joe. Okay, now that the song is playing, you can find me on Twitter <laughs> at JV Vernola. You can find me on Instagram at JA Vernola. Primo's Premier Pro Wrestling comes up March 13th at the Roxy Theater. You can get tickets for that at theroxydenver.com. And you guys have a great 111 more episodes of listening to us. That's right. Love you guys. Out Ladies, there. Thank you so much for listening. That's right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us each and every week. 111 episodes. You know, it's a, it's a big undertaking for us every week to get together sometimes. And I appreciate you, Joe and Ian, uh, for being here every week with me as well. So thanks, guys, for being dedicated to the podcast. Thank you to the fans for listening, downloading, sharing, subscribing. You're the men, you're the women that we appreciate who listen to us each and every week. I mean, even if nobody listened to us, we'd still keep doing this because we love South yeah. Park. But yeah, like you it. downloading it, it does give us more incentive to like want to do it every week because we know there are people actually listening to it. So thank you yeah. so much. Uh, yeah. Find us everywhere. Just uh, subscribe. Let your friends know. Let your mom know. Let your dad know. And uh, come on back next week for another edition of Suck My Balls. 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 Suck my balls.